How would you tell your story of how you came to find Jesus Christ? Where and when did you first become aware of your need of God? What and who guided you on your faith journey? And what challenges did you encounter along the way? And how did God help you navigate them? Well, this evening, we have heard the faith story of how some wise men from the East meet Jesus. These men were astrologers, probably from Babylon, the seat of ancient astronomical studies. Just as God guided Moses and the people of Israel through the desert by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, So God sent an especially bright star to guide these astrologers miraculously on their journey all the way from Babylon to Jerusalem. Remembering God's guidance, I think this evening of Harriet Tubman, nicknamed the Moses of her people, who was guided out of slavery in Maryland to Philadelphia in the 19th century by the North Star. Tubman said, God gave me my strength and he set the North Star in the heavens. He meant me to be free. Harriet found work in Philadelphia which supported her 19 trips back over the Mason-Dixon line. And she became the bright star who led 300 people into freedom, facing incredible dangers, as shown in the inspiring movie, Harriet. Well, the faith journey of the Magi is not without its own dangers and challenges. In this fallen world, infected by self-centered sin and evil, Led by the star to Jerusalem where it stands still, the astrologers consult with King Herod and the Jewish religious experts about the next step of their journey. On hearing from the wise men about the birth of this new king of the Jews, Herod is terrified because he sees the writing on the wall. The other people in Jerusalem are also terrified. Herod, the cruel puppet king of the Romans, had his wife, Marianne, and several of his family members killed. So ruthless was he that the Roman Emperor Augustus declared that he would rather be Herod's dog than his son. And so from Jesus' birth, a spotlight is shown in Matthew's gospel on the clash between the earthly kingdoms of violence of this world and God's heavenly kingdom embodied in the love of God's son. God guides the astrologers through the Jewish authorities their knowledge of the Hebrew scriptures, specifically Micah chapter 5, verse 2, which locates the royal son of David, the Messiah's birth in Bethlehem of Judea. Ever devious, Herod secretly meets with the astrologers, asking them to inform him when they find the royal babe, pretending that he also wants to worship this new king. The Magi set out for Bethlehem, and once there, that star miraculously appears again and stops over the very place where Jesus is living with Mary and Joseph. You see, the sages are indeed wise men, for they act on the guidance that God gives them. They do not merely have head knowledge about the scriptures. They are open to obeying the light given them 
in the Bible and stepping out on their faith journey. As the Chinese philosopher Lao Tse says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The Magi's obedience makes possible the fulfillment of our Old Testament reading in Isaiah 60. Nations will come to God's light and kings to the brightness of the Lord, a foretaste of salvation offered to all people, both Jews and Gentiles. Well, the risen Christ appeared to the murderous Saul on the road to Damascus and called him to preach the good news of the luminous love of God in Jesus to both Jews and Gentiles. And the converted Apostle Paul in our Ephesians 3 reading reveals the mystery hidden from the ages of God's eternal purposes proclaimed today on Epiphany, which literally means manifestation. Today we celebrate the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, the savior of the whole world. On finding the infant, the wise men obey the guidance they received and they unhesitatingly kneel down and worship this little boy, offering him their very best gifts from their treasure chests, costly gold, fragrant frankincense, and myrrh, a resin used in perfume, medicines, and incense. In spite of Herod's evil machinations, we see the Sovereign Lord's unstoppable plan for the world continuing to unfold. God guides the Gentile astrologers in a dream to return to their home in the East, their homes in the East, by a different way to avoid evil King Herod. You see, friends, even in our unconscious dream lives, God can guide us. And indeed, he does so six times in Matthew's Gospel, each time saving the day through a dream so that God's plan for the salvation of the whole world will be accomplished. Well, today I want to remember the recently deceased Archbishop Desmond Mpilo Tutu, who shone as a bright star in South Africa, resplendent for all to see. Tutu was a leading light in the struggle to end apartheid, passionately arguing for sanctions to pressure his country to end this institutionalized, cruel system of white supremacy. Tutu was committed to hours and hours of daily prayer in order to seek God's guidance and wisdom in the face of so many brutal challenges. Tutu found daily strength in Jesus Christ, who was his North Star. His brilliant light of warm love and justice helped guide his people into political freedom in 94. And Tutu was chosen by President Mandela to chair the Truth and Reconciliation Commission which worked hard to forge a new path of peace and conciliation for all South Africans of every race, the rainbow people equally loved by God. Well, today, like the astrologers, we have seen his star and have come to worship Jesus. So will we bow down today and adore Christ as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Will we offer to Jesus from our treasure chests our very best gifts, our time, our love, and our full attention? 
And how can we, together at St. Mary's, shine brightly as the light of Christ, the loving, non-violent light of Christ in this dark world, as Jesus commands us to do? Especially as we remember today the traumatic insurrection at the Capitol last year. Following the examples of Harriet Tubman and Archbishop Tutu, how can we each and together make our country a safer, more hospitable place for people of every race, of every creed, nationality, language, ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation? May God continue to guide us this new year in all the challenges that we face. Amen.